you've been applying dozens of times and then you see the guy that you know is not as qualified as you, but they get the job. So what's going on here? Here are a few reasons why this could be happening. First reason is that they knew the right people. People who get hired sometimes, they know somebody on the inside. This could be maybe their niece, their nephew, their cousin. This is called nepotism, but unfortunately, it happens all the time. And it's not just directly somebody who's related to you. This could be maybe the hiring manager's peer comes up to them and says, hey, did you know that my nephew is applying for this position? Have you seen their application yet? Something as simple as that, something as suggestive as that could end up in that individual getting the job offer. Now, there's also the fair way of doing it, and this is by networking, growing your network, expanding, doing informational interviews, getting to know people. And you could be asking, well, how do I do that? Well, networking essentially is a value exchange. You're getting value and you're also delivering value. But how do you meet these people? If you go on usajobs.gov, there's a list of hiring events and it's always updated. The problem is they don't always have every single hiring event from each agency. So what I have done is I go to the top 15 executive agencies and I pull their hiring events and I email it to you. If you want to be on that list, sign up for my free newsletter down below. Next is they were the best candidate on paper. The truth is you can have all the qualifications, the skills, the experience necessary on your resume on paper, but you can still be a horrible worker. You can still be lazy. And on the other side of the coin, let's say you do not have really strong experience, but you paid somebody, you paid a professional resume writer to write your resume to make you seem like this glowing, superiorly qualified candidate because you were willing to shell out the money even though you're not. Keep in mind that your achievements, your experience, the things that you have done, it means zero. It means nothing if it is not in your resume. Now, if you came over today and we sat down and we looked at your resume over a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, we looked at your resume, we could find areas where we can improve it, guaranteed. But it doesn't just have to be through me. You can find other people to review and provide constructive feedback on your resume. And you should, you should do this frequently. What I usually see is that people are comfortable with their current resume because it once upon a time, it got them a job offer. And because it worked three or four years ago, they didn't think that maybe I should improve this thing. Also, when people start their jobs, they don't usually update their resume. They don't do it every month or every quarter or every year. They just grow comfortable with their jobs. Okay, the next thing is that their personality got them the job. If you make it to the interview stage, it can turn into a personality contest. I don't care what certifications you have. I don't care if you have the PMP, if you have Security Plus, it doesn't matter if you're not a good fit with the culture. You can be highly skilled, but you can be rude. You can be somebody that's not willing to grow, to learn, to communicate, to be a part of the team. And this is where your personality and how you're communicating and how your nonverbal communication is, are you smiling, are you appearing cold, are you appearing approachable or coachable, that's where it all comes out. It comes out during the interview. Next is they simply outworked everyone. If a weaker candidate is committed to applying 500 times, they will probably see more success than a higher qualified person that only applies five times. The sheer volume will expose that individual to more opportunities. They probably will get more job offers but they can't do it with any old weak resume. They need to spend the time in strengthening that resume. This is why you might be sitting there with a master's degree or maybe even a PhD and you're looking across the hall and the guy with the high school diploma, or maybe he, he has a GED, but he got a job over you or he has a better job. You don't know by looking at somebody, how many times have they applied? How persistent have they been? How determined are they? The next thing is sometimes the less qualified person has a desirable skill set. From the outside, people can look less qualified. They could be very young. They could appear lazy to you, but that same individual might have one or two crucial skill sets. You'll see this a lot in the IT field or the computer science field. 
This individual, they might know how to program in Python, in JavaScript, in C Sharp. They know that. And the older, more professional looking individual, they just don't have that skill. So they're not as marketable. You can easily be a better candidate in a lot of different areas. But if you're not the better candidate in the one area that matters the most, you can get passed over. And it's for this reason you should constantly be trying to develop yourself, get more certificates, get exposure to classes. And now it's easier than ever. It's free. It's free on YouTube. It's free on Coursera. It's free on edX. Okay, so another thing to consider is that you're overqualified. And that's why the other person received the job offer. So a hiring manager is not going to be quick to extend you a job offer if they believe, if they think you're going to pick up and leave in the next 12 to 18 to 24 months. Usually when people hire, it's with a long-term vision, at least three to five years. That's what they're thinking. That's what they're hoping. So if you seem flighty, if you seem the type of individual that you're so highly qualified that this GS7 or this $50,000 a year job is not going to be enough to hold you into this organization, then why bother? Why waste everyone's time? If you have two or three master degrees and you're trying to get a job that pays forty dollars or $45,000 a year, they know you're not going to stick around for very long. Why would you? All right, so if you're feeling discouraged with the job search because the job offers have not been coming in, I do not want you to quit your job search because if you do this, it can dramatically impact your life in a negative way. And if you want to learn more about that, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.